Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of Ring Respect Radio. I am Bobby Munson, and I am joined, as always, by the man with the angelic voice. He is Papa Smokes. Papa Smokes, how you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm doing great, Munson. How are all you wrestling people doing out there? Hopefully everybody's doing great, taking care of themselves, and yes, watching a lot of great wrestling. And speaking of great wrestling, Papa Smokes, we have got MLW's Kings of Coliseum coming up here on Wednesday, January the 6th. This is an event that I've been looking forward to. I know you've been looking forward to as well, too. going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so everybody who can, go and check that out on Wednesday or watch the uh, replays anytime afterwards. It's going to be available for free on YouTube because MLW are fantastic and they like to give the fans what they like to see. Uh, Pop Smokes, we're in for some uh, great matchups at this event and we're going to use this opportunity as a predictions video, kind of a discussion, open forum discussion and give our thoughts on who we think is going to come out victorious from the Kings of Coliseum. Uh, first match we're going to talk about, Papa Smokes, we've got Simon Gotch taking on Jordan Oliver of Injustice. Uh, thoughts on this grudge match that they have scheduled for Kings of Coliseum? Yeah, yeah, the MLW has been uh, kind of trying to get this feud going between uh, Injustice and uh, certain members of Contra Unit. And uh, here we've got, uh, we had a couple of backstage attacks, a couple of uh, people got knocked out and hurt and sneak attacked by by Contra, as usual, and in one of those uh, uh, dust-ups in the back, it uh, it was said that uh, Gotch had injured uh, Injustice member Cotto Brazil, and now they're saying that he's, uh, his career in MLW is finished from uh, injury incurred during that uh, fight. So whatever we actually have here, possibly Brazil has decided not to come back to MLW he actually is injured. We don't know. But anyway, we have a, an opening for Jordan Oliver to come in and uh, challenge Simon Gotch uh, about revenge for the uh, injury to his friend. And uh, we got ourselves a nice little grudge match for this card. What do you think of this one, Munson? I'm looking forward to it. It should be a great opener. I'm assuming that this one's going to open the card up. I, I could be wrong. They might do one of the title matches first. But uh, definitely interested. I think I mentioned before when we were doing reviews of MLW that I don't know if uh, it's part of the gimmick or what, but Jordan Oliver just, yeah, I mean, he gets under my skin with the way he talks and stuff like that. But again, I believe it's all in character and I'm not knocking the guy. I'm looking forward to seeing how, how this one gets pulled off. Um, I'm probably more familiar with Simon Gotch's work in the ring. I think he's a fantastic wrestler and I think he's going to bring a lot to the table. Definitely looking forward to it. Uh, but here's where we go. Where do we think this one is going to end up and who's going to come out the victor? I got to say, I think that this is going to be Contra's night here, Pop Smokes. I think Simon Gotch is going to pick up that win for Contra and keep that uh, Contra team looking strong. Uh, I, I like your pick, Munson. I, I, I'm having a hard time with this one. I, I, I find that like, uh, it seems like the lowest guy in each faction kind of uh, just drew each other's numbers. Uh, I like Gotch. I appreciate his work. I, I respect it and all that, but... Uh, the past bit in MLW, he just he hasn't really looked like he's had that spark. He doesn't look like he's uh, hungry for victory and uh, hungry for more matches. Having said that, I, I'm not sure about Jordan Oliver either. I, I, I think he's all right. He's got a lot of skill in the ring, but... He's skinny, and uh, he just he doesn't strike uh, me as in a particularly tough guy as he's supposed to be in uh, injustice as kind of like a kind of like a street crew, I guess they are a bit of a street gang type thing, and uh, so I'm not sure about this one. I I'm thinking of uh, going with uh, Oliver to uh, keep Injustice's name in there. I'm not sure how he would pull it off, but. Uh, I'm going to go with Jordan Oliver in this match, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens with that one. I, I, I think your pick is good, too. Uh, you know, I, I'm in the same boat. I went back and forth with this one in the exact same way. I wasn't sure which way they're going to choose to go if Oliver picks up that, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to say quite an upset win, but kind of an upset win, uh, yeah. being that he's still kind of very young and green in comparison to Simon Gotch, and with the momentum of Contra, it would look really good for Jordan Oliver, but at the same time, I don't feel like this is going to kill Jordan Oliver in any way by losing to a member of Contra and having Contra looking strong because they are kind of the focal point of MLW at the moment. 
Yeah, I, I like your logic there, too. I, I'm still kind of batting this one around in my mind. I could see either going over. Um, I kind of had the feeling like Gotch might uh, blow this match and and uh, and infuriate the rest of Contra at the same time. I'm not too sure where they're going with this one, but I think it'll be good. I, I like the fact that it's a grudge match. Is there any stipulation in this? Is it a no disqualification or something, or just kind of grudge match? As far as I know, just a grudge match. I haven't heard anything about no disqualification. Yeah. And quite frankly, I, I hope to keep it that way. It'd be nice to see a wrestling show that doesn't have a bunch of gimmick matches on it at the same time, too. Because, yeah. I mean, yeah. speaking of gimmick matches, we do have one, even though not a crazy weapons gimmick match, but a Texas Tornado match. This is for the MLW Tag Team Championship, and it's going to be the Von Erics defending against the Dirty Blondes, who will be accompanied by, uh, I believe it's uh, Aria Blake, if I'm not mistaken, the way you pronounce her name. Yeah, and they're part of uh, Colonel Tom Parker's uh, stud stable now, too. We've got him uh, inserting himself as a manager in this. That should be interesting. Yeah, definitely. So, And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of uh, reason to really be behind this matchup. I mean, the Dirty Blondes, I mean, they're... They're quite the team as well, too. They got a really kind of an old school feel to them and stuff like that. Uh, I really like th this. This feels like a classic tag team championship matchup to me between these two teams. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It seems like an NWA era uh, 90s kind of match. I like the Von Erics. Um, I feel like they're still getting their chops kind of in professional wrestling. I still feel like they're fairly. New, but I like what they've got going on. They've got that uh, pedigree, you know, from the famous, famous Von Erich family. Now they're third generation wrestlers. Um, a great baby faces, uh, popular. Their name is so well known, and uh, they had a great run to uh, the tag team title, and uh, they're quite popular now. Dirty Blondes, they, they, uh, MLW is just debuted in the company and these guys like you said take kind of an old school uh redneck or cowboy kind of gimmick coming out with the uh bull rope with the uh, with the uh cowbell on the end and uh managers and such like that i think they'll be uh, a little underhanded in their tactics and such and i think um i think this is probably going to be a pretty good match especially uh debuting a new team that a lot of their fans haven't seen. I think they've had one match on TV so far, and that was my introduction to them. So let's put them in there against uh, a championship caliber team and, uh, and hell, make a Texas tornado. Anybody can be in the ring at the same time. It, it'll be good. It'll be wild, I think, and I'm looking forward to this one. Definitely. So, and what I do like about this, and again, you're saying about the Dirty Blondes being new, is that it now sets up a new opponent for the Von Erichs moving forward. I feel like, again, like you're saying, the Von Erichs just getting their, their feet wet and stuff like that. I think this is a perfect opportunity to build them, having them beat teams that feel like legitimately put together tag teams that fit that division of MLW and have them still go over. I really strongly believe my prediction is the Von Erichs continue their championship reign as tag champions because I feel there's much bigger things in store for them in 2021. Yeah, I agree with your prediction in this one, Mons, and I believe the Von Erichs should go over. Um, they've had some successful title defenses up until the COVID shutdown and such. I think they will continue that for a little bit. Um, uh, having the Dirty Blondes win the titles on their first big match doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I, I think the, they will make a strong showing, but uh, Von Erichs will retain the titles in this match, in my prediction. Perfect. We're on board with that one. Uh, next one is one that, again, I've, I've gone over so many times, Papa Smokes, this one is hard to call. We're talking about the world middleweight title match. Myron Reed defending against the debut of Leo Rush. This was probably... Uh, outside of the main match with Hammerstone and Mads Kruger, which we'll get to in a minute, this was probably the most publicized match on the Kings of Coliseum card for this Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah, and they've done some uh, great promotion for this match so far. I think uh, people were uh, surprised and impressed that Leo Rush, after his uh, release from WWE, was going to head right to MLW, which... I'm not mistaken, I think he used to be in before he got called up to WWE, but anyway, he's back in MLW now. He's got his sights set on that uh, uh, light heavyweight championship held by Myron Reed of Injustice, and uh, 
Yeah, they've had some nice promo packages. Uh, these two obviously are familiar with each other from the past. They want each other. There's uh, unfinished business in this little kind of personal feud about who is the best as, as the light heavyweight uh, in MLW. And I think it's going to be a pretty good tilt. I'm not a huge fan of Leo Rush. Uh, I, I kind of like Myron Reed. But in this match, I think uh, I'm going to go with Leo Rush uh, winning this title, put a little shine on the uh, light heavyweight title, make a big splash in his debut, and uh, I don't think it'll hurt Myron so much to lose. I think they could go on to do a little feud after this and a little program together, maybe uh, maybe all over that title or maybe some grudge matches, but uh, at any rate, I'm going with uh, Leo Rush making the big splash in his debut. Stole the words right out of my mouth there, Papa Smokes. I think I have to go with you on this one. I came to the conclusion that I think you're debuting a name, the the I guess in a way the size of Leo Rush coming from the WWE back to MLW. Uh, I don't think there's any way you can have him go out there, especially and lose cleanly to Myron Reed. The only way you yeah. can maybe do it is by having some form of interference. Or and again, there hasn't really been a lot of build up there. I can't see Jordan Oliver becoming a factor in the matchup. Uh, especially one this publicized, I just can't see it being there at any point to it. I think this is going to be a, a fast-paced, quick matchup, a uh, real good display of the middleweights. I'm agreeing with you. Uh, Myron Reed, uh, seeing more of him is starting to really uh, grow on me a lot more. I never was huge on Leo Rush, although very athletic and very talented. You know you're going to get a very fast-paced, uh, interesting middleweight encounter between these two. But I do have to say, yeah, I think the... The star power from Leo Rush is definitely something that MLW could use right now for sure. And I think putting the title on him would be a smooth move on their part and really would get some of the uh, the wrestling sheets talking and stuff like that and get a lot more attention on MLW if fans were to all of a sudden hear that a name they're familiar with, like Leo Rush, had just won one of the championships over there. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's the name. He's got a name in the news already that, and everybody knows him. I think it'll just uh, uh, promote MLW's middleweight title by putting uh, the belt around his waist and uh, get some uh, tongues wagging about MLW, and that's that's what we want. Exactly. And their tongues should be wagging if they knew anything about the main event for Kings of Coliseum, Papa Smokes, because we have got two absolute brutes heading into that matchup. It is the national openweight title match. It's your boy, Hammerstone, Alexander Hammerstone, defending against... Mods Kruger of Contra. What are your thoughts uh, on this one, and uh, what can we share on this one? Well, this is a match I'm quite excited for, uh, more than the other ones on this card. Uh, uh, since they started up again uh, at MLW, this seems to be the, the big feud that they're pushing right now. Uh, we saw Hammerstone uh, have a match on TV, after which he was attacked by uh, the black hand of Contra, Mads Kruger came out and uh, hit him with a chair and uh, choke slammed him onto the apron and uh, gave Hammerstone those uh, rib and back injuries that uh, put him on the shelf from active duty for a while there, which also got Hammerstone's uh, temper up and uh, he's really fiery to get back at Contra. You know that Hammerstone has kind of had a thing with Contra over the all over the entire lockdown, his star seems to have shone more brightly than anyone else's in the MLW. And uh, there's been a lot of fan uh, speculation about wanting to see uh, Alexander Hammerstone versus Jacob Hatu for the MLW heavyweight title. So there was this kind of heat brewing between Hammerstone and Contra. And uh, hence why Contra got their new hired gun, Mads Kruger, to come out and maybe uh, lay some hurt on Hammerstone, try and put him on the shelf for a little bit. So this is going to be wild. Uh, we've got Hammerstone that's just a uh, beef mountain. He's just got muscles all over him. He's, he's strong. He's a great wrestler. But we got this Mads Kruger, who is an absolute beast. He's a monster. He looks like he's 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, quite a huge physique on him. He's got uh, some devastating maneuvers. We've seen him putting his opponent so far after the match into contra body bags. And this is just looking like a destructive match between two huge guys. I'm, again, I'm not sure uh, how I feel about the prediction side of it. I 
think that Hammerstone will go over in some way, but I don't think it'll be interference on the you know, contra and that uh, I, I honestly, I fear on a little match. I, I think he's per- perfectly capable of winning it. I think Contra wants him out of the way. They want him uh, to be not a threat to Jacob Fatu in the heavyweight title. So I think there's going to be some uh, shenanigans by Contra in order to uh, get Hammerstone out of the picture. Man, Bob Smoke, great minds think alike because we are on the same page with this one as well, too. I actually wrote down that I think my prediction is a no contest at the end of the night on this one. As much as some wrestling fans hate no contest or double countouts, DQ finishes, they've been used for so long and so well in professional wrestling, especially when you look at the history of professional wrestling, uh, reading through some of the books, looking at some of the past matches. It was not considered a wrong way to end something, having it a no contest or a double DQ, anything of the sorts. And I really strongly believe this one's ending in a no contest. Hammerstone's not going to lose the title, but Mods Kruger is not going to be made to look like he can be beatable at the same time. I believe that Contra is going to have an all-out war here. I think that this one is going to end ugly, and this is going to end with both sides of MLW facing off in the center of that ring. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, this is just going to uh, only heat up the war between Hammerstone and Contra even more. So, uh yeah, I, I, I think we're on the same page with this. It's going to get wild. It's going to get brutal. And uh, despite the finish, I think it's just only going to uh, uh, heat up everybody for uh, more violent encounters between uh, Hammerstone and Contra. But yeah, it's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. And again, anybody who wants to check that out, MLW giving this a great pay-per-view quality event away absolutely free live on youtube this wednesday night i believe it's at 7 p.m eastern time uh so again it will air on youtube at that time it will still be available to watch anytime afterwards so if you haven't done so already go over and subscribe to mlw's youtube channel and make sure to give them a like as well and make sure to tune in to the kings of coliseum and also let papa smokes and i know your thoughts on the matches what you think is going to happen and also Chime in and let us know what you think of the event once it's all done. Again, it's going to be a hell of a show. We're looking forward to it. Thank you for tuning in to this special edition of Ring Respect Radio. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell. And we'll talk to you real soon.